Okay, now I'm going to move on to acquisition and horizontal. Uh, I grouped these two together because uh, they're, they're very much the same thing. Uh, and in fact, uh, some of the modes that uh, I think the Siglent puts under acquisition, Reichel uh, puts them under horizontal. So I'm going to call them the same, although they are slight differences in, uh, but they basically are the, uh, the time stamps. In other words, one, two, three, four across the screen. That's the acquisition. It's also the horizontal display. Uh, <clears throat> here are the published specifications. Now, I haven't verified these, uh, but uh, the Rigol uh, time base can go down to 5 nanoseconds of division and up to 50 seconds of division. The Siglent can go down to 2 nanoseconds, and that should be a small N instead of a capital N, uh, and 50 seconds. The capture rate, once again, these are published capture rates. Understand uh, that this will vary greatly depending on the particular time rate, uh, time base that you have selected, and the particular trigger type, and so on. Uh, this is kind of a maximum of 30,000 waveforms a, a second versus 60,000 for the Siglent. They both sample at one uh, giga sample per second. As I pointed out earlier, the, uh, the Rigol has, comes with 12 meg of memory and the Signet with 14. You can buy a memory upgrade for the Rigol, but uh, here I'm just looking at what you, what you get when you buy the scope if you don't buy any options. They both have an XY mode, and I'll show you that a little later. Uh, they both have a roll mode. The difference is the Signet can go down to 50 milliseconds uh, uh, per division in roll mode. The Rigol can go down to 200 milliseconds. Uh, <clears throat> then the acquisition. There are basically three types of acquisition that these scopes do. All three do, or both of them do all three. The normal mode, the peak mode, and the average mode. And the difference is that in the peak mode, it looks for the peak of the signal. In other words, if you do an average, what you're doing is uh, eliminating the noise by basically averaging several sweeps together. In the uh, Rigol, you can have as few as, as two uh, sweeps uh, in the average up to 1,024. With the Siglent, you have to you can only start at four. So basically you can have an average of one or in the case of the Rigol, two, four, eight, etc. Uh, averages. Uh, the reason that the peak matters is if you're looking for a, uh, a narrow signal, the ability to sense the peak, and here the Siglent has a, about a four to one advantage over the Rigol. They, they claim that they can, that they can peak detect uh, one nanosecond, whereas the Rigol uh, can only do four nanoseconds. But one of the things that I want to show you is this history function that the Siglent has, which I do not think that the Rigol has. Uh, so let me show you that right up here. What I have going on, by the way, you may notice that I turn off the Rigol when I'm not using it. The reason is that uh, I have some trial licenses that come with the scope like the decode options and, and the extra memory and so on. And it turns out that apparently, whenever you have the scope on, you're using the time on those trial licenses. So if you, uh, if you forget and go home for the day and leave your, your scope on, you may come back in the morning and find that all your licenses have disappeared. But understand, they're free trial licenses, so it's not like you paid for them. Uh, but I'm saving those so I can use them to compare with the Siglent when I get to particularly the trigger and decode options. Uh, okay, so what we have here is a random uh, signal. Now, I hit the stop button over there to show you kind of what it looks like. 
Uh, it is a uh, sequence of random width pulses and I have it set right now to uh, and this is I just did the auto setup so it's basically using edge trigger now here is what's interesting about this scope it has a button here called history if you hit the history button it stops the scope now that's no different than hitting the run stop button but down in the lower right hand corner here you see you have a frame number what it has done is it has saved each frame of the scope. Now a frame is, is basically what you see here on the uh, on the display. It's, it's this much data. But it has saved each and every one of those. So for example if I go to frame number one right there you see what what we're looking at. Then if I go to frame number two So that's frame number two and you'll notice it was different and the nice thing about this is unlike regular run stop let me uh, let me do a a regular run stop you see there if you want to look at the uh, at something you can zoom down but you're stuck with that particular uh, frame to look at. But the nice thing about the history function is if you hit the history function, you can not only look at that frame, but you can also look at the all of the other frames. And in this case, it recorded uh, 3,583 frames. Later, when we uh, look, uh, oh, by the way, also one thing you can do is you can zoom in on each of those. And I don't think I uh, talked about the zoom, but I'm going to add that to the list of features. Both of the scopes have a zoom feature where you can basically change the time frame and notice the bottom window is basically showing what's what's in the uh, dark area of the upper window. The upper window is what was captured. The lower window is an is an expanded or zoomed version of that. So uh, I think also uh, Dave Jones was a little bit uh, perturbed because I think he got trapped in the history mode and he couldn't get out. I figured out a way to get out. I'm not sure if it's the right way. Uh, by the way, in the in the manual it says if you hit history and then stop. The trouble is if you hit history, it runs. So if you hit stop again, you just get back history. Uh, but what I found is if you do something else, like for example, go to another trigger mode and then do a run and now stop, the history does not come back. It, I think it's recording the history all the time, but at any rate, uh, it's a neat function. I think it'd be very useful. Uh, so uh, let me stop at this point and reset to do the XY mode, and then I will stop on the Siglent and move over to the Rigol.